Rob Monahan, everybody. <laughs> if you like what you hear, uh, you're in for you know, some more upcoming opportunities to hear more like that, uh, which we hear about at our closing announcements. Uh, but for now, I want to welcome you all to worship this morning. Hello, good morning. My name is Maddie Martinson, and I am the discipleship director here at MUMC. And if you are new here, I want to give you a nice, warm uh, welcome from Mumsy. If you're worshiping online as well, hello, good morning, good to see you. Feel free to greet each other in the comments, leave your prayer requests there, whatever you see fit. Um, and if you are here this, this morning and you're new, or if you are, uh, have recently changed your address, your phone number, whatever, um, we have connection cards for you to fill out. Uh, there are little black folders on your tables or in your, in your chairs nearby you. Um, and there's a blue uh, half sheet connection card that we would invite you to fill out. Um, this is our way of following up with you and letting you know uh, what is happening here at Mumsy. And there's a lot that happens here at Mumsy. Uh, am I right, church? <laughs> a lot of really great things. Uh, and I wanna tell you a little bit about some of those things before we begin our morning of worship. This Wednesday, we have a few things going on. On October 2nd, uh, first of all, we will kick off uh, an evening with our monthly fresh food distribution starting at 4 p.m. Uh, we are a partner agency with the South Michigan Food Bank, and every month on the first Wednesday, we distribute fresh food boxes uh, to over 100 families in our community every month. In addition uh, to those boxes, which are packed by volunteers at the food bank, uh, we also give out a variety of items. Uh, this past month included uh, fresh, fresh produce from our community garden, which many of you know about. Uh, we handed out 200 plus bakery items, 
And then, with the harvest season upon us, we were able to distribute 717 pounds of bulk green beans, 788 pounds of Roma tomatoes, and 424 pounds of sweet corn. That's a lot of, that's a lot of produce, right? Yeah. And that's just one of the many things that we do here uh, to meet the, the needs of food insecurity in our community. So if you or someone you know who could benefit from this, could benefit from this, uh, invite them to, to line up here at the church starting at 3.30 p.m. on Wednesday, October 2nd. Uh, if you would like to volunteer and help distribute all of that food and more, uh, you're welcome to come around that time as well. John Seppinen, our, our lead volunteer, would be happy to have you and teach you the ways of how we do things. Coming up later on that evening, uh, we are launching uh, a new session of Financial Peace University. Uh, we showed a video uh, last week, uh, but it's coming up fast. This is a nine session class that is taught by Dave Martinson and Mike Ansel. And this class will teach you about uh, budgeting, about buying and selling your home, uh, understanding insurance, building your wealth, and being generous with your giving. You can attend one, two, or all nine of the sessions. And uh, there are handouts in the back of the great room or out in the great hall uh, with the, the weekly schedule of the different topics and such. Um, so feel free to grab one of those, put it on your fridge, and if there's something that catches your interest, uh, please feel free to come on in. There is a small fee uh, for participating in the class, uh, and you'll see that when you receive the sign up to, to go online. Uh, but if that is an issue for you, if that is a barrier for you to taking this class, we have plenty of folks here at the church who would be willing to sponsor you uh, because they have taken that class themselves and they know that the benefits outweigh the costs. Uh, so please feel free to get in touch with myself, with Dave, or with Mike if you have any questions about that, if you would like to sign up, um, or anything else you would like to know about the class. Now, these are all the things that I have for you right now, so if you would please stand and join us in our first song. This is Every Beat. Take it away, band. <laughs> That isn't our first song ever be. Good morning, church. This is a familiar one. Join us as we worship the Lord. songs of praise. Only you can, only you can. Jesus, you're the only reason that I'm even breathing. I am wide awake. My heart beats only for your glory. My hands reach up for you to hold me. My soul sings. Father, you are holy. My feet Calling, every beat is calling out your name. You left the glory of your throne to bring this round away back home. Only you can, only you can. You give me love, you give me life, you keep me dancing through the night. Calling, 
Don't we serve an awesome God, guys? We're praising Him. Let's do it. Jesus, you're the only reason that I'm even breathing. I am wide awake. You move me. Your freedom is consuming. I feel it rushing through me. I'll never be the same. I love that song. Join us in our next one, God So Loved.
friends. I'm so happy to see you all this morning. When we hear that music, it's time for kids time, and we love kids at Mumsy. Good morning. Good morning. So I brought a couple of silly things with me today. First of all, check out my glasses. Do they look good? Do you think they would help block the sun? They might, they might. Do you think they will help me see you? I can see you. Does anyone you know wear glasses or do you wear glasses? Sydney wears glasses, yeah. Sydney, do you want to try these on? See if they work as well as your glasses do? Oh, come, will you, will you stand up on the stage and just show everybody real quick? How does she look? Very good. Very good. Thanks. Thank you, my dear. Now, the other thing I brought with me is a microphone. And this is a little different than the one I wear on my head, right? The one that makes me look like Taylor Swift. Don't I look like Taylor Swift? A little bit? Okay, right. Um, this one, if you talk into it, it makes an echo, echo, echo. Do you want to try it, Zach? Yeah, okay. Can you stand up here? And can you say, God loves you? Anybody else want to try? Yeah, come up here. I had a feeling. Yep. And then turn around. And can you say, God loves you as loud as you can? Did you, did you change your mind? What if we said it together? Okay. God loves you. <laughs> very good, very good. Anybody else want to try? Molly, you're thinking about it. Can you say, God loves you? Oh, very good. She said good morning. Okay. So these, these glasses help us remember that it's important to see everyone who's with us in the church. And this microphone helps us remember that it's important to hear everyone who has something to say in the church. And the Apostle Paul, everybody say Paul. Paul. He's a guy who wrote a lot of our Bible in the New Testament. And he wanted the church to all get along. He didn't want the church to fight. He didn't want the church to... Um, yell. He didn't want the church to do anything that was disrespectful. He wanted everybody to be seen and heard. Do you have a question, Zach? Do you know Paul? Yeah. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Most of the time. Parts of Ephesians. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Paul wanted everybody in the church to get along. Now, in your household, does everybody get along every day? Is there ever fighting? Is there ever yelling? Is there ever anyone crying? Not even Luke? Luke doesn't cry? Oh, okay. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy all the time. Right. Okay, well, aside from the utopian world that Jeff and Shelley have created for their beautiful children, my assumption is that sometimes there's crying and yelling and fighting. It's part of being human, right? It's part of being who we are as boys and girls. And so that happens in the church too. But what Paul says, his ex-friend Paul, says that everybody should try to listen Everybody should try to see their neighbor and see how important they are and how beautiful they are. Now, I know that this church sees you all, and we're so happy that you're here. 
So I want to take a moment and have you guys stand up, and I want you to look at all these people in our church, and I want you to cheer them on. Can you say, yay, God loves you? Okay, we're going to practice it. We're going to say, yay. And then you're going to say, God loves. And then you're going to point, and you're going to say, you. Okay, now we're going to put it all together. Ready? Yay. God loves you. There, they got it. They got it. Very good. Very good. Um, I'm going to say a prayer now. Would you like to say some words after me again? You can choose what volume you pray at. Does anyone want my microphone to pray? I thought about it. Okay. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our kids. Help us love each other like you love all of us. Amen. Very good. Boys and girls, you get to stay in church with me today so you can go to your seats. Okay. You're going to go to your seat. Yep. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, beautiful people. Oh, you make me blush. This morning, we are continuing our sermon series on the Golden Rule, and we are working through this series along with about 900 other United Methodist churches across the country as we think about what it means to be the body of Christ and how we manifest kindness, compassion, humility, respect, and love, especially during these turbulent times in the midst of an election season, when there's a hurricane hitting the, the coast, when we are finding ourselves overwhelmed in a lot of different ways with what's happening in and through our world as we focus and as we kind of ground ourselves on these Christian virtues, we always remember the golden rule that Jesus gave us in the Gospel of Matthew in the seventh chapter where he said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is the principle that grounds us, that helps us live our faith in this broken world. This is the thing that we can center ourselves on as we navigate relationships and as we be that presence of Christ at work in the world. So today as we talk about respect, one of the things I'm aware of is that respect is sort of the accumulating result of when kindness, compassion, humility, and love come together. It has this snowball effect, right, where you can see how we gain momentum and speed and force for good in the world. And when we have kindness, compassion, humility, and love, then the end product will be respect. The act of respect, or the act of respecting someone, means that we're willing to look at them often. We're willing to consider their perspective. We're willing to observe their life and how things in their life impact them on a daily basis. Respect is a verb, and it's something that we have to do and work at. It's one of these spiritual disciplines that Christ calls us to practice. And the Apostle Paul speaks about respect. He speaks about it when he's writing to the church in Corinth. And so I want to read a few verses from his first letter to the church in Corinth, chapter 12, verses 20 through 26. 
As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again to the head, to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor. And less And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body that giving greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers with it, all suffer with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. So here Paul gives us a metaphor. He gives us a metaphor of the human body. And the human body is this system that God has designed in a magnificent way so that every part works together. My brain works together with my hands to make these elaborate gesticulations to try to help you all pay attention, right? My hips work with my knees, work with my feet to help me walk and take steps and not fall on the stage and trip over Rob's guitar chords. The body, it's okay. I love you for it. I could not do the whole thing that you did today. That was incredible. Paul wants us to know that this metaphor is something that can work for the community, for the body of Christ, for the church as an institution. And Paul says, yes, of course we are diverse as a body of Christ. You have brown hair, you have blonde hair, you have dark skin, you have light skin. You're a woman, you're a male. You think this way, they think that way. There's diversity in the body of Christ, and yet Paul is trying to find the common ground upon which they can stand. And for them, that foundation is their faith in Jesus Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's also the spirit at which they experience themselves when they are together in worship. We, as a body, are very diverse people. We are unique and wonderfully made by God in heaven. And yet when we are here, there is something amazing and mysterious and holy that happens. We come together and we find common ground on our faith and our desire to worship God on Sunday mornings. Now, Paul would say that this diversity is really important and that we need to respect each person in the midst of their differences. Why is this kind of respect important for us today? I think there's a few reasons. The first is that we need to preserve the dignity of each person, every man, woman, and child, so that they will know their worth. There are people who are fragile, who are hurt, who are wounded, and in their wounded state, something is triggered where they said, I'm not worth that much. I'm not meant to be here. I don't have anything to contribute. And those kinds of thoughts break God's heart because in, in our faith, we remember that God created each one of us in God's image. We each have an equal share of the image of God in us. And each person is held by God and beloved by God. That means that God loves me and God loves you and everyone else. God doesn't have one favorite. God treats us all as favorites. God's love for me is as deep and as wide as it is for you. One of my mentors, her name is Naomi, she closes every meeting that she leads, every single one, and we lead a lot of meetings, you guys. 
every single meeting, she says, thank you for being here today. Thank you for your contributions. Each of you is God's favorite. Let that sink in for a minute. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your contributions. Each one of you is God's favorite. In our society, that's a pretty countercultural idea, right? We're not always happy that everybody shows up to every meeting, whether that's in the church or city council or in the state of representatives. We live in a world where there's a hierarchy, where some voices are elevated above others and given more time to speak. Some voices are the squeaky wheel that become louder than others. We live in a world where things have boundaries and limitations, where I get something and that means you don't get it. There are privileges that exist in our world, but those privileges don't exist in God's eyes. God's grace and God's love extends to you and to me in the same form, in the same fashion, in the same amount, at all times and in all places. And it exists no matter who we are and no matter what we do. It's really mysterious. It's really countercultural. And it's really, really good and wonderful. The reason it's so wonderful is because God loves us when we are at our best and when we are at our worst. God loves others when they are at their best and when they are at their worst. And treating each other with respect, making sure that everybody feels seen and heard, helps us honor and respect the Imago Dei that exists in each other. I'm going to tell you a story today, and and this story is one that I had to get permission from my husband to tell. Preachers always tell stories about their families, you know. But this one I had to get special permission because the preacher in the next town over might be disgraced by it. So my husband and I were traveling about 10 years ago on the highway on Interstate 131, and we were going north. And one thing you need to know about Joel about 10 years ago is that he practiced something called road justice. Other people might call this road rage, okay? But Joel calls it road justice because if someone participates in an act of injustice, like failing to use their blinker or not turning on their headlights when it's getting dark outside or cuts them off in traffic, there are certain acts of justice that previous Joel thought would be appropriate. Are you with me? There's the side eye where he takes his eyes off of the road for a short period of time, turns his head, and gawks at the other driver as they're passing. Then there's the bird. Are you with me? Because I'm not going to demonstrate on live stream. The bishop might see it. Joel participated in these acts of road justice, and as we were traveling north on 131, someone who was not very kind at the time came right up against our bumper, going too fast, and and kind of tailed us. And then they flashed their lights at Joel to get him to move over or do something else, and Joel didn't. The road justice told him to actually slow down at that point. And then the person passed Joel and cut him off very quickly so that we had to slam on the brakes. At that point, the road justice told Joel that he should lift his fist and lift one digit. Are you with me? Okay. And he left it there for a prolonged period of time. 
And it turned out that as we were exiting the freeway, we got off the freeway at the same exit where the person who experienced Joel's road justice was also exiting. And it was at that point that I asked a gentle question. You know how the wife asks a gentle question sometimes from the passenger seat? I said, isn't that Mr. Delaney from your church? God's grace is really good. Because it just so happened that the next day was Sunday. And Pastor Joel had to go face Mr. Delaney in worship. And then at the SPRC meeting where he was to be evaluated for his professionalism. It could be said that the pastor a few miles down the road was having a hard time seeing the image of God in Mr. Delaney on that day. It could be said that the behaviors manifested that day were not ones of mutual respect, not kindness, not compassion, not humility, and probably not love either, if we're honest. It could be said that in the midst of a heated experience, a heated exchange, neither person was their best self. And so there had to be some healing and there had to be some reconciliation that took place. Kinder words were exchanged on Sunday morning. Each person apologized. Joel got to hear where Mr. Delaney was going in such a hurry. And Mr. Delaney got to hear about how it's important for the safety of his family that everyone on the road practices safety as well. I think respect is so important in our society because we need God's grace to heal and to rebuild trust. As much as we sometimes want to deny it, when we experience an act of disrespect, it hurts. It feels like a burden that we carry where we have been dismissed, where we have been mistreated, where we have been wronged or humiliated. It makes us feel broken. That kind of vulnerability takes strength to admit. And when multiple people are feeling disrespected all at the same time, the fabric that knits our society society together starts to feel tattered and worn and weary, doesn't it? We depend on each other. Just as Paul says in the body of Christ, The head cannot say to the hand, I dismiss you. The hip cannot say to the knee, I don't need you anymore. We all need each other because we are tied up in one garment. Respecting each other doesn't mean that we always like each other. It doesn't mean that we're always going to agree with each other. But it does mean that our lives are inextricably bound because we're all in this life together. My flourishing is dependent on your flourishing. And each one of us is dependent on each other for flourishing. Paul says for the body to function, it means every part has to be working well. Every part has to be working well together in tandem. So even though we might not like a hand or the foot, even though we might not like the color of hair or the color of skin or the party affiliation, if we are all feeling disrespected, if we are all broken, not a single one of us is going to be able to work together. 
There's a movie that I've been thinking about this week, and I've been thinking about it because Maggie Smith stars in this movie. Are you familiar with Maggie Smith? Uh, she passed away this week. She was in Harry Potter. She was in Peter Pan. She was in Downton Abbey. And the, the movie that I've been thinking about this week was Sister Act. It's an old one from the 1990s. Here's a, here's a famous scene. Maggie Smith is in the movie, as well as Whoopi Goldberg. And in this movie, Maggie Smith plays a nun. And she is the person who is responsible for leading the church choir for her Catholic parish. And then Whoopi Goldberg enters into the scene because the priest has been given the responsibility of taking care of Whoopi Goldberg's character and making sure that she's safe. She's in a witness protection program because she witnessed a murder in the movie, and they have to keep her safe. And so she goes into this costume. She goes into hiding. She puts on a habit, and she helps the church choir. Now, Maggie Smith is quite prim and proper, and she's been a nun for decades. And Whoopi Goldberg comes in with her big afro and her earrings and a style of secular music that was mostly sung in leisure clubs, whereas Maggie is more versed in the sacred music, in the church hymns and anthems. And Maggie Smith and Whoopi Goldberg have to find a way to work together. They have to find a way to come together despite their differences because the priest has given them a mission, and that is to try to bring the church together through music. It's to try to revitalize the church choir, get a few more voices involved, reach out to the neighborhood kids and see if they might want to sing and put on a concert. So Maggie Smith and Whoopi Goldberg end up working together, and Maggie teaches Whoopi about how to read music. She teaches her about the importance of timing and how everybody stands up and sits down together. She teaches her some conducting skills, and then Whoopi Goldberg teaches Maggie about the spirit of the music. She introduces a couple of dance moves for the choir to participate in. You know, the kind where they sway to the left, sway to the right, snap your fingers. This is revolutionary for Maggie Smith, and it takes some time for her to come to grips with it. But by the end of the movie, the closing scene is a huge gospel choir with both Maggie Smith and Whoopi Goldberg conducting, and they're singing a gospel tune called, Oh Happy Day. And it's a happy day because they have come together, they are praising God together, and they are working through their differences with respect and with love. The fruits of the Spirit are being made manifest, and everybody's voice is valued. Everybody's contribution is worthy. This is what God envisions for us. This is the happy day in the kingdom of God that will one day be here as we come together with compassion, with humility with respect, and with love. I believe that this is the kind of world we want our children to live in. This is the kind of experience we want our kids and our grandkids to have. We need to model respect so that our children can learn it. And we want the next generation to be better able to live together and work together and serve in the kingdom of God together. The future will be here because the kids are here. And even if we don't like what's happening now, we have the opportunity to make the future a better place. 
Our children will learn the lessons that we teach them. And we can either teach them the lesson that there are certain people to hate, there are certain people who are bad, there are certain people who are wrong, there are certain people who are not a part of us. That lesson is just as true in church as it is in society. Or we can teach our children to be kind, to respectful, to tolerate differences, to handle disagreements, to see everyone as important and valuable, to listen well and to listen charitably, even when we have opposing viewpoints. We can teach our children about the importance and the value of diversity and how each one of us bears the image of God. I believe that this dream, this hope, and this vision has been one that has been coming together for a long time in our church and in our country, most certainly in our world. Perhaps we need to remember the wisdom of Aretha Franklin, who sang about R-E-S-P-E-C-T and reminded us that we all have it within. Can we hear that song? She's great. The lyrics, what do you want? Baby, I've got it. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. We all want and need respect. We need to preserve the dignity of each person so that they will know their worth. We need to heal and rebuild trust. And we need to model respect so that our children can learn it. What do you want? Church, we've got it. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Will you pray with me now? Creator God, we come to you today in the midst of this fall season grateful for the beauty that you have made all around us. As the leaves begin to change colors and as weather patterns begin to shift, we're aware of the glorious splendor that you have put before us, the vibrant life that pulses all around. And as we look around us this day, oh God, we look at our brothers and sisters here in this place, and we're in awe of your amazing creativity, for you have made each one of us unique and special. You hold us in the palm of your hand, and you call us precious and valuable. God, help us to see how we can use our gifts to serve the body of Christ and help us to see where we can come together to help support the ministries and programs of Marshall UMC. Oh God, we pray that you would use all of our ministries and programs, each and every person here, and all of the resources that we have been blessed to give your church. God, we know that the needs are great and that there are more people in more places who need to know of your amazing love and grace. Help us just as we give to receive that grace. Help us to offer forgiveness and healing and words of reconciliation to those whom we have wronged 
with disrespectful words and actions. Help us to give your grace away as we participate in community gardens, as we give toilet paper and paper towel to the haven of rest, as we come together to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Oh God, this day, as we think about places that are hurting and people who are in need, our minds drift to the coast, to where Hurricane Helene has left a trail of devastation in its wake. We pray for every victim, O oh God, who has been injured or who has lost their life. We pray for those who are without power or whose homes have flooded. And we pray for all those who have evacuated in search of safety and higher ground. Help us, O oh God, to know that just as one tragedy passes and another takes its place, that these people are not forgotten, that their needs are not overlooked. Bring your comfort and your peace to them this day and always. O oh God, send your comfort and peace as well to all those who are grieving and mourning this day, to those who are in pain, to those who are sick and suffering to those whose mental illness and emotional turmoil has gotten the best of who you made them to be. Help us to find our resilience and our strength, O oh God, in your Son, Jesus, who is our Savior and our friend, who is the one who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join in our morning offering and partner with us in ministry here at MUMC. Your financial gifts support all the good work we are doing here at MUMC. Please give generously as we worship God by sharing our gifts, tithes, and offerings. You can use our drive-up offering box, the donation station at the back of the great room, or you can give online by visiting our webpage, umcmarshall.org. You can also give by scanning the QR code found inside the black folders on the tables. So thank you again for joining us in worship this morning. We have a, a new one this morning for you. If you can please stand and join us. You may have heard it on the radio. It's very groovy and very fun. Makes you think of the 70s of all the nice little ballad type songs, but the song is called, I'm So Blessed. I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed. I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed.
A lot of fun. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of fun and a lot of chords, right? That, yeah. That's on the radio. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, on every station, whatever you turn on, it's always on. So I want to tell you about a special event that we're having here on Friday, October 18th, starting at 6 p.m. We will have a harvest music gathering featuring folk and fingerstyle music. Uh, so if you were here at the beginning for the prelude I was playing, doing some fancy things and making lots of cool noises, that'll be part of that uh, show. So it's like a concert, but please come along and join in, sing along, listen, and there's also going to be a chance to play music afterwards, so please bring your instrument with you if you would like. Uh, it'll be about 45 to 50 minutes of music and refreshments will be served. Uh, join us rain or shine, and we hope to see you there. Now receive this blessing. As you leave today, remember the spirit of God is already at work within you. So go with joy to love and serve God and one another. And may the blessing of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be among you and within you. Amen. And I do want to mention one more thing. Totally glanced right over that. So for that Harvest Music Gathering, those who may know Chris Chill, she is in, primarily in a traditional service, sings in the choir, she plays violin, she's a violin extraordinaire. Her and I will be doing some duet pieces as well. Uh, so throughout the traditional service, we'll be doing preludes of fingerstyle and uh, join folk pieces. And then in here I'll be doing fingerstyle and we'll kind of join them together and make a nice, nice sounding uh, concert for everyone. So hope to see you there, but have a great week. I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed.